When I woke up this morning, I was feeling pretty dangerous. I'm about the past, I'm about the future. Welcome back to Draft Us. My name is Walter, and today's episode, we're talking about the big draft shakeup. That's right. We're back, everybody. We'll be talking free agency. We'll be talking about all different stuff. But right now, we're talking about the draft. Why? Because the Bears just traded the number one overall pick to the Carolina Panthers. If you check me out on Let's Talk Sports, you know I was talking about this potential trade as it was happening. I know. So check out. If you want, you can follow the show at DraftFice on Twitter, at DraftFice underscore football on Instagram. You can follow me at B-R-O-J-O. Death is in the end of life. Punch like a delicious drink you drink in the summer. I'm also on Face Off with Face Mirror every Thursday and on Let's Talk Sports, the Friday football, 5 o'clock hour, uh, every Friday or most Fridays. And this Friday, we talked a little bit pre-free agency uh, shakeups. And as the end of the show, at exactly 5.45, 5.50, the news came up that the Bears are trading the number one overall pick to the Panthers in exchange for multiple first-round picks, multiple second-round picks, and the one, the only, DJ Moore. And I think that's actually the biggest part of this shakeup is that the Bears have acquired DJ Moore, the uh, wide receiver for the Carolina Panthers, but also they got a 2024 first round pick to move back to number nine. They also got a 2023 second round pick and a 2025 second round pick. So they got multiple picks plus a major player uh, in this trade up. Big deal for the Bears. Big deal for the Panthers. I thought this was a weird move for the Panthers because, like, I would have given up more trade compensation so I could keep DJ Moore. Because that's the kind of guy you're going to eventually trade compensation for to get for your your rookie quarterback. I, it just doesn't really click for me. I didn't get it. Um, the Panthers do have a lot of talent on that team. Uh, so I do think getting a rookie quarterback under the rookie wage scale will be a huge advantage in that division, in that conference. Um, their defense is looking really good. You look at all the pieces they got there in Carolina. It felt like it was time to take the leap and get a quarterback. You look at the offensive line stuff that they went through this year. Uh, they got a lot of good play from Corbett, from uh, from Brady Christensen. Both those guys, though, tore their ACLs this year. They also got some solid play out of their centers. Both Pat Elfline looked pretty good to start the season, and then when they moved over to Bozeman, both those guys are going to be free agents. They did restructure Taylor Moten to, to get some extra cap room. And Iki Aquanu looked really good as a first-year uh, left tackle. So what do I feel like with the Panthers? I think that this was overall a smart move. I felt like this was what they were going to do. Um, I think it was starting to become the rumor mill on Friday the 10th that the Panthers were going to really try to make a real push here to get the, the number one overall pick. There were other teams, I think, in the running for it. But I think they were the team that had the most to lose by missing out. Remember, they were ninth overall. Um, so they really couldn't afford to wait. Now they leapfrog everybody. They get their choice of the litter. So whether they want Bryce Young, C.J. Stroud, Anthony Richardson, or Will Levi, they will get their choice of guys. We'll find out who Frank Reich, the new head coach, wants to, to pick. Uh, I will also do a head coach preview uh, now that we have all the coaching, or most of the coaching assistants have been hired for each of these teams, we'll be doing that as well. I just kind of wanted to focus for this couple of minutes, though, on the trade-up for the number one overall pick. Who it could be for the the Panthers, whether it's Bryce Young, um, who I think was a lot of what everybody was saying would be that number one overall pick. Uh, but it could it could very much not be as well. Um I, I still look at this trade up as kind of crazy, right? Uh, mainly because, like I said before, I'm a huge fan of DJ Moore. I think trading away DJ Moore was like trading away another first round pick for that number one overall pick. You are leapfrogging multiple teams to get there, but I mean, I look at it from the Bears' perspective, right? Let's let's go from that direction. They move down to nine. They're out of the reach, I think, of Willie Anderson and Jalen Carter, although we don't know what ends up happening. They are still within a stone's throw of getting up to them. Maybe they trade one of their second-round picks to jump up to leapfrog another team to go ahead and get one of those guys. I don't know 
Seahawks and Lions both feel like they would be very much in the running for one of those two players. Um, it now feels like one and two are definitely going to be quarterbacks overall. Three, you know, Arizona could probably trade down as well and could probably benefit from a trade down and getting players. But let's look at it overall. Now you get the Bears who have the most cap space in the NFL, right? When we're looking at salary cap cap space, they have 94 million according to over the cap, effective cap space 86 million uh because you have to sign your free agents, uh, you have to sign your uh, rookies and you have to uh sign all your guys. But their effective cap space is eighty-six million. I don't even know if they use all that this year. Um, Justin Fields still has another couple years on his contract, uh, luckily enough. So again, they have him at a very cost-reduced price. Uh, we will be in the third year of Justin Fields. I think that it's going to be a very big year for Justin Fields, year three. I also am very curious as to how they handle this offseason. I think they're going to definitely invest in those trenches. Uh, if you listen to me talk earlier uh, on uh, Let's Talk Sports or how I've talked most of this offseason on most of the shows that I've been on, uh, the Bears feel like a team that needs to invest heavily in the offensive line. So it could be Caleb McGarry for right tackle or Mike McGlinchey for right tackle. Uh, you know, Jawan Taylor. There's going to be quite a few guys. I think McGlinchey makes a lot of sense because he's a good run blocker. And when you're utilizing that mobility of Justin Fields as part of your your general O-line build, I think that's going to be a big deal. I think that they should go after multiple offensive linemen and really try to design an offense around what Justin Fields does well. I, I'm very much a big fan of Justin Fields. I, 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 I thought what he did this year was amazing athletically. I mean, he he looked like if you gave Lamar Jack, uh, he looked like a, a mixture of basically Lamar Jackson and Cam Newton to some degree, uh, very much similar to Cam Newton. Where uh, again, and, and even a little bit of Tyrod Taylor in some of the ways that he was running. But overall, I thought you can build an offense around this guy. You could build a team around this guy, and. Now they bring in a wide receiver like DJ Moore. I think, listen, the Bears are looking at it like this. We want to see if he can develop. We want to see if Justin Fields can take that next step forward like Jalen Hurts. So similar to how, you know, the Eagles went ahead and traded a first-round pick for A.J. Brown, the Bears traded down and got a first-round pick level wide receiver in DJ Moore for their quarterback. So now you have him to go along with Darnell Mooney, to go along with Chase Claypool, you now have a very good receiving core to go along with Cole Komet at tight end. Uh, I think the offensive line and defensive line have to be heavily invested now this season. Um, you know, you got to look at right tackle. You got to look at building up the D line. Maybe they're the ones that go after Javon Hargrave. Uh, maybe they're a team that's into the Chauncey Gardner Johnson sweepstakes. Uh, we will see. Uh, you know, Iberflus has a very uh, good, I'm assuming, good relationship with Bobby Okariki, another free agent linebacker who might be somebody who they're in the running for. Um, you know, they did trade away Roquan Smith to get a second round pick, so they they are uh, they're going to have a lot of opportunity in this draft to really build up that team. I think they have to fully rebuild that defense quite a bit. Um, but now I think they're kind of, I think they're at least going to be out of the running for Willie Anderson, maybe Jalen Carter as well. Um, but we'll see how far Jalen Carter drops and what other teams value. You know, it's possible that, you know, because of Jalen Carter's off the field, um, he might be there for them later on, but I think they have to also address D line and free agency. Uh, you know, some of the edge rushers that are available for the bears, uh, could be, you know, we're hearing Leonard Floyd's getting released. We're hearing uh, Bud Dupree's getting released from the Titans. So there's a lot of edge rushers that will be available. Jadavian Clowney. I, I think you can build an amalgamation of a defensive line, an edge rushing line that can, you know, really create pressure, especially if you're building up the back end for that defense as well. Um. Yeah, and I think again, Javon Hargrave is going to be a huge part of this uh, this defensive free agency. So overall, I think the Bears are in a really good position to really reset and build a team that could take them to the playoffs and maybe even to you know beyond that. But I don't want to be overly projecting for them. 
when we're not entirely sure who they get in the draft. We're not sure who signs with them in free agency. But I am liking where they are going in general as far as who they've signed, where they're going with it. And now they've traded down. They set themselves up for the future. Two second-round picks, two first-round picks, a store-wide receiver, and a partridge in a pear tree. The Bears have set themselves up mighty well. And the Panthers, I thought, I honestly like the idea of them trading up to get whoever they really want as far as the the quarterback goes. That's not my concern. My concern right now is for the Panthers is who's their wide receiver? Because is it Terrence Marshall, LaVisca Chenault? You know, you could draft a wide receiver, but if you don't have a wide receiver to go with your quarterback, you're kind of in a weird situation. They also have to kind of address their offensive line stuff. Uh, like I said before, they have two guards that went down with ACL injuries. Uh, the interior of the offensive line, you know, they're losing two centers to free agency. Uh, hopefully they resign them or extend them. Uh, they did bring in a new coaching staff. They have Frank Reich. He's brought in a lot of really interesting people, including Evero, who had some really good success over with the Broncos. You know, I think with this defensive talent that they have, I think they could be very much in the running for – a, a, again, being a very good team this year, especially in an NFC South that is not very, uh, you know, very competitive. We see Derek Carr is now with the Saints. You know, he, he makes them at least semi-competitive for sure. The Buccaneers sound like they might not be competitive at all. They might be moving on from Mike Evans. We know they're moving on from Donovan Smith. Levante David's hitting free agency. Jamal Dean's hitting free agency. Uh you know, Lombardi Lenny doesn't sound like he's going to be sticking around anymore. They no longer have Tom Brady. So that whole team is kind of being redone. Cam Brate doesn't sound like he'll be back anymore. So the Tampa Bay Buccaneers are kind of in this rebuild mode. You know, they sound like they're in the running to maybe sign a Baker Mayfield to compete with Kyle Trask. So that team's kind of in a weird spot. The Atlanta Falcons are in a weird spot. They sound like another team that could have been in the the running to trade up to you know with the Bears to go ahead because they actually have the second most cap space right now in the NFL with uh, 57 million in effective cap space. Um, they're picking eighth overall, so maybe they could have traded up. Sound like they were okay with Desmond Ritter. I don't think they're going to be totally locked in on Desmond Ritter. It sounded like they could have been in the running for Lamar Jackson. We'll see what happens there. You know, you have Daniel Jones who just got extended with the the Giants. So, um, you know, the quarterback carousel. We'll talk about that. I'm going to do another video on that. But overall, this trade up has been. I think electric. I think it's interesting to see what ends up happening now. I'm very curious to see who the Panthers take. I do think Bryce Young is probably the guy. And again, I just think it's weird to go ahead and you move on from that. Maybe they go ahead and bring in DeAndre Hopkins or they bring in somebody else. But now you have to set up your quarterback to succeed. And yeah, they'll still have a second round pick this year because of the Christian McCaffrey trade. But I mean, the Panthers are giving up a lot to move up to number one. I think moving on from DJ Moore was actually the most that they gave up. That was that was bigger than a lot of, a, of the rest of the the draft capital because you can kind of maneuver not having draft capital, but you just people give up draft capital for wide receivers. I mean, essentially, we saw four wide receivers last year go for number one picks or more, and to to give up DJ Moore. You're, it's, again, you're giving up essentially a guy who could be traded for a first-round pick. Um, overall, I, I think it was a great move for the Bears. It was a solid move for the Panthers. I think the the DJ Moore trade is what makes me a little bit more bothered by it. But other than that, um, again, like, follow, subscribe. Uh, if you want, you can follow me at brojo. Death is in the end of life. Punch like a delicious drink you drink in the summer. Uh, and you can follow the podcast at DraftVice on Twitter, on DraftVice underscore football on Instagram. And uh, until next time, take care. When I woke up this morning, I was feeling pretty dangerous. I'm about to pass. I'm about to pee.